I'm Holly. And I'm Bridget. And this is Girls Next Level. (laughs) Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. We are continuing on with Season 2, Episode 3, Career Dazed, Part 2. You're seeing our careers or lack thereof. Right. (laughs) Yeah, that's about it. Um, I think where we left off last time, uh, you were just about to say that since you have been with Hef, you haven't had specific career girls. (laughs) Which I think is very telling because I said ever since I've been with Hef, I haven't really had any specific career goals because I'm not allowed to right. like I learned that right away like uh, right away like within the first couple of months of me being there I was asked to like go judge a Hooters bikini contest or go be in it or something I don't know whatever it was and I was so excited about it and I told half about it and he's like you can't go that makes me jealous I don't even want you working there that makes me jealous and I was like oh, okay I can't be a waitress so it was just I even feel to some extent today, like I don't even know what my biggest goals are. Like I have goals for sure, but I feel like I have this weird nagging sense that there's something else big that I'm meant to do, but I don't even know what it is because my self-esteem has been so hampered throughout the years. Wait, I have this too. Shut up. 100%. Tell me more about it. I just always feel like I'm not doing my full potential. Like there's something more I should be doing and I don't know what it is that I need to be doing to get to it. And do you feel like you kind of have a mental block because different things in your life have kind of put you in a corner and made you feel like you can't do certain things or you can't think outside the box? So like emotionally and mentally, you kind of like put yourself in this corner like, well, I could never be able to do that. So your mind doesn't even go there. I've never thought it through that much, but I just always have that feeling to me that like there's something more I need to be doing and I'm not doing it. And this happened to me years and years and years ago Mm -hmm. when I like had um, tested for Playmate but Mm -hmm. didn't get it. I would wake up in the middle of the night going, no, there's something more I need in my life and I'm not doing it. Like I know there's something bigger for me and that's when I just had to like do it and move to LA and like become part of the mansion because I was like losing sleep over it and then having anxiety knowing there was something more and there was and I'm having that again I feel I feel like that's a real thing it's like a calling and I don't know if it's coming from like your spirit guides or your higher self or if you even believe in any of that but I feel like it's a real thing it reminds me of Frozen 2 when Elsa is hearing that weird voice and she's like this isn't it for me like there's something else out there like what is this voice I need to follow it yeah, it is a vo- it is like a, p- a calling from the mm-hmm. other side. And I wish they'd give more specifics on what we should do. <laughs> I know, because I feel like when I came to LA, I had such big dreams of just doing something in the entertainment industry, whatever my first gig I could get was, whether it would be acting or hosting on TV or some kind of niche modeling or something like that. And I definitely wanted to be in Playboy. But then after moving into the mansion, like my self-esteem just took such a hit from like Hef treating me the way he did and like the other girls treating me the way they did and just that I kind of like put all these blinders on myself and just like my mind was in a cage. Like I didn't feel like there was much I could do. Yeah. And if there even was something I wanted to do, I would never feel like I could admit to it on Girls Next Door because Hef wanted me to just be like, no, you just need to be happy being here. And I did find like a way to thrive that was within the Playboy world because I really got heavily into like the merchandising and then later working at the studio Yeah, because I felt like those were things I could do. And I was super into that. I think more so than even being on camera or doing anything like that. I was super into like, we had web stores and websites set up through CMG. And I was really into like the merchandising and like getting the bobbleheads going and getting the coffee table book going and the jewelry line and things like that. Like I was always pushing and I was always pushing to get us more stuff too like I tried to get us like workout clothes lines and like swimwear lines and like those kind of got cut off but 
I really felt like that was where I was going, but I wasn't 100% comfortable saying that on camera. And I don't know if even at this point, at the beginning of season two, like obviously I was doing the jewelry line and I'd already put like the bobbleheads and the coffee table book and stuff and the calendars in motion, but I don't think I'd really latched onto it mentally that like, oh, this is something I love to do. And this is something like the merchandising and the branding, that's something I'm going to focus on. It was more like I was just trying to scramble and pick up whatever crumbs I could. Yeah. Well, it's interesting what you said at the top too about how you couldn't go and do that. Um, was it Hooters or Hawaiian Tropic? Or No, it was a Hooters pageant. The, the Hooters pageant. Because mm-hmm. um, there was something that I had done before I even moved to the mansion. I had done this Scream Queen contest. And it was like, do you remember this? I do. The rabbit movie. Yeah. So there was, but it was like a lot of different little things that I had to do to become like a Scream Queen. It was like mm-hmm. a contest. And like first, it was like I don't remember there was just a bunch of different steps but the last step I had to do was recreate my favorite scene of a horror movie oh I remember that yeah did, you, did I show it to you the Carmen Electra scene yes. yes so I did it and I turned it in and it took forever to find out that you know like who won or whatever but like a year later or something like that I found out that I won mm-hmm. I won the Scream Queen contest me and there was like there was like five they wanted five girls and what we win is we got to go to Pennsylvania. They flew us out to Pennsylvania to film this low budget. And I'm talking low budget, you guys, a horror movie. And um, Hef did not want to let me go and do that. Jeez. I do remember that being a thing. I remember you had to ask him a couple of times. Because really he told like, me no. Yeah. And I was just like, there's no way I can't. I mean, like I had spent over a year mm-hmm. working on this and doing this. And like I won this Scream Queen contest. Like, no, I have to go and do this. Yeah. This was before Girls Next Door and all the stuff. This was still Mean Girls era. But um, I finally got to go. It was like, but it was like three days away from... It almost irritates me more that he wouldn't let you do it during the Mean Girls era because he had so many girlfriends around. Yeah. Like, ugh. Yeah, but I almost feel like he was worse then. He was. Like, at least with Girls Next Door, we got a little bit of opportunity to go. Yeah, because I think he felt like if he let us go do stuff as the stars of Girls Next Door, that was helpful to Playboy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was almost impossible for me to go and do that that scene. That's crazy because like why should he have been threatened by that? Like there's no reason. It's just a control thing. Right. Well, I just think he just didn't trust girls to be away for like three days or four days or however long it was to go shoot a movie in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. I might be meeting up with your yeah. extra boyfriend on the side. <laughs> yeah, I say shooting a movie in Pennsylvania in quotes because, you know, I'm sure those people would have said that. In the oh, past. yeah, for sure. Or visiting their family or something when they were like really off with a boyfriend. And then you say, so this is the first scene. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm like an illegitimate lady of the house. I get up before Hef, take my dogs out, check the mail, check my email, involved in keeping the girls' schedules together. (laughs) I feel sad watching myself in this scene because I just feel like I know how ambitious I am and how much I wanted to do and I just couldn't do it and I would have never felt comfortable like disclosing any of my dreams or ambitions on the show and I just kind of had to be like um and I kind of have to think of something to say like I'm an illegitimate lady of the house I get up before half which isn't saying much because he got up really late so I could even sleep in and that's still getting up before half yeah and Harlow in the scene is so cute I just want to snuggle her I know. I know. And then when I say like I'm kind of in charge of keeping the girls' schedules together, I wasn't really in charge of you guys' schedules. I think what I mean is at that time, I was trying to do so much as far as like the marketing and stuff and we all had to be in it together. So I'm like, guys, we're meeting with this author who might write our coffee table book. Let's schedule this then. Or I need you guys to all get together for the bobbleheads or I need pictures from you guys for this or what do you guys want to do for the calendar? It was more like that kind of coordinating stuff. It's not like I'm saying... Kendra, be here at 8.30, even though I was always getting in trouble for her being late. That was not really my job. So I just wanted to clarify that. And you say there are too many opportunities available to me here at just at Playboy. Which is just a lie. And it's just me again trying to make Hef and his world look good. Because 
I was trying to make opportunities for myself within Playboy. Yeah. They weren't offered to me except for the show. And me saying, oh, I'm just so busy here. I can't do outside things. Like that's 100% not true. I was not allowed to do anything outside, no matter how small or unthreatening it would have been to have. So that's why I just hate watching these scenes. And it makes me sad because they're just so untrue. And it's just me like sticking up for him and trying to make his world look okay and palatable. And I'm just like, ugh. See, I was starting to feel a different way at this time. I was starting to think, you know what? I need to figure out what next is for me or what it could be or what I would want it to be or what I dream it to be. And I need to just start throwing that out here in this interviews because things were coming true for us, I felt like. And I felt like yeah. if I put it out there, it might happen. I never in a million years dreamed I'd have a Porsche like that. Yeah. Like I never in a million years dreamed that we'd have more than one pictorial or be famous from a TV show. So I was just starting to think like, and I remember that this is sort of the time frame where I started to tell myself, what do you really, really want? What do you really, really want? Well, I really want to host. Mm -hmm. What do you want to host? If you could host anything, what would it be? And I remember as I always said I wanted to do something travel related. Yeah. And that, but this is like the time period where I started going, I have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Like what that next is and start putting it out there yeah like for sure that's the direction I want to go mm -hmm. I did see in this scene your $250,000 makeup line yes me too the $250,000 makeup kit is on the vanity it's back in action and um I just want to say that the $250,000 makeup people were mad at me because allegedly the makeup wasn't featured enough in the show but we've already seen it on like both episodes of the season so far yeah like it's it gets getting in there so I don't know what they expected me to do a whole infomercial so you say here is my career list for the next year this is in commentary I think that you say this oh what do I say I forgot designing a second line of jewelry done going to Marilyn Grabowski's apprentice and direct playmates done and a bunch of other stuff you said <laughs> Probably, I don't know what it would have been, but it probably would have been stuff I would have been like afraid to say because I don't want anybody to hear it and think I'm like trying to get away from Hef or trying to, you know. <laughs> right. God forbid. I know. So the next scene is you and Crystal Camden walking into a building and you say one of the projects I'm working on is... A Wait, do you mean Hef's former girlfriend, Crystal Camden? That Crystal Camden, <laughs> yes. You guys, if you don't know, I just hate that they lower third her that way. Like that's her only identity. You say that you're working on a line of jewelry within the Playboy brand and you introduce Crystal to the jewelry designers. I came up with the idea to do a jewelry line when we were having a meeting with Playboy licensing. Do you remember that meeting? Uh, tell me more. We were in the dining room and it was just a meeting the three of us were having with Playboy licensing. And I don't think it was because they wanted to like offer us opportunities opportunities I think it was more like picking our brain like oh Playboy has this hot new show like how can we incorporate oh, yes. this into like Playboy branding and I said well I want to do a jewelry line I want to design these jewels and I want to and I was like drawing them out there and they're like oh okay well this could be something right so I got to do it and I know people are going to ask if I got paid I think I got paid a little something but it was very it was like a one-time fee like a token fee but that wasn't what mattered to me it wasn't really about the money it was about getting more things under my belt and more experience and getting the girls next door brand out there more thus our individual brands out there more that was more what was important to me yeah in commentary I said the guys look so young to have this company and then you explain how it's a family business um, but these guys have the Playboy account and the Disney Couture account and it's funny because they cut the guys to make them look like they're so unimpressed with everything I have to say which wasn't the vibe in real life at all it's just like they're cutting that to be funny no I remember them even coming to the mansion sometimes and stuff and they were cool oh yeah they were super nice always super encouraging I don't think there was ever an idea I had that they turned down I'll take pictures of all my archive and put it up on the Patreon and stuff so you can see like the sketches for the jewelry and the oh, perfect. things like that. And the sketches I'm showing on camera are not my sketches. Like I would do an initial sketch and then they would do a more detailed sketch after that. And those are the ones I'm showing. So I don't know who drew them, but <laughs> and I'm laughing because they're showing me like the computer graphics and I'm like "Ooh, this is like movie special effects and it's so funny because it's just like commonplace by today's standards but I remember back then that was like so high tech yeah. like "Ooh, look at this 3d render of the charms we're gonna make yeah and then I mentioned that they aren't doing a premiere for scary movie 4 on the west coast Right. Meaning they're doing one in New York. We just couldn't go. Right. <laughs> right. 
And that's, that's odd. It's odd that we would have this prominent cameo role in a movie and not be allowed to even go to the premiere because Hef just can't let us go for one day. Is it weird that they did it in New York? Yeah, I think that's a little odd. Usually movies have their premieres in LA or if it's a big movie, they'll do it multiple places, but always in LA. Yeah. So that is strange. So the next scene, Kendra's asleep in bed and her room is all dark and they had snoring noises. Yeah. <laughs> and Kendra says, after going to school for nine months, she finally graduated from massage therapy school. Did she graduate? I'm not saying that to throw shade or like suggest she didn't. I'm just, I just feel like it's odd that we don't remember her graduating unless she was like really secretive about it for some reason. Because I feel like that's something we would have celebrated. I feel the same exact Don't way. Don't you think? Like, I can just see you coming up with, like, a gift basket and yes. some, like, spa theme night at the mansion on a Thursday. Yeah. Like, I just feel like that's odd that we didn't celebrate that. I don't know if maybe she just kind of trailed off massage school and then just said she graduated to put a lid on it, or if she graduated and just never told anybody. I don't know either because it's, it would not, like, we definitely would have done something. Yeah. hundred percent. So I was kind of I was kind of shocked by that too. I was like, oh wait, so she did graduate from massage school, or does she does is she just saying that? Like I'm not sure. Yeah, not I don't sure. know. Or they might have just been putting a pin on it because producers needed something like, wait, we portrayed you as going to massage therapy school in season one. What happened to that? So that it could have just been her putting a pin on it. I don't know. Yeah, because maybe she just didn't like it. And they show her doing uh, massages. And going through all the different things in her head and stuff like that. And in commentary, I was like, I would have been the... I would have been the guinea pig for that. Like, you could have practiced massage Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I um, think it's interesting that you get a flashback. And then Kendra gets a flashback. But I get no flashback. And I think that's just because I was such a non-entity in season one. Well, remember, you have zero career goals in, in Zero one. career goals, yeah. Nothing going on yeah. but, but being there for half. And Kendra says, I think massage therapy is like a backup plan. And it cuts to her in her super messy room. And she says, um, I don't need responsibilities right now. I'm 20 years old. I'm going to have responsibilities when I'm 27. Is that weird to you? I don't think it was at the time. But uh-huh. watching it back now, yes. It's so weird to me because unless you're a trust fund kid, everybody I know who's 20 has to have responsibilities because you're either working a job or you're getting up for college classes. I was working a full-time job and commuting to school and going to school full-time. Me too. So it's really strange that the show is trying to put it over like, oh, if you're 20, you don't need to do anything. And this whole show just reminds me of like infantilization. And I have a lot of thoughts on it because I think the show and Playboy and Hef infantilized us. But I do think there were sides to all of our personalities where we all three were childlike in different ways. And we were all kind of using our time at the mansion in part, I think. I mean, at least I very much see it with me and Kendra. You can weigh in on if you feel this way for you too. But I feel like in a way we were kind of using that time to kind of like reclaim our childhoods or like get back things we didn't have in our childhoods. Do you feel like that way for you or no? Um, not so much. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like I see ways that I do fit that profile. Like definitely with all the themed parties. And yeah. Everything. But I would have done that without the mansion. Totally. Was totally doing that without it anyway. But I feel like one reason you're such a good fit for this universe the show is trying to create is there are things about you that are childlike like yes you want to have the pink room you want to have the Halloween decorations you want to do birthday parties yes and this was back during a time period where adults didn't do that as much like now I think it's okay to kind of like be a big kid in some ways and hold on to things you loved in childhood as an adult that's more accepted (gasps) do you think we had anything to do with that I could I think so (gasps) (laughs) <laughs> that would make me so happy if our show had anything to do with that, that making that okay for people today. I think it kind of did because people grew up watching it and they're like, that's okay to do when you're older and it's fun and things yeah. like that. Like, I mean, back then, like a Disney adult was not a term that had been coined at all. I feel like I was one of maybe two people who was a Disney adult back then. Not that you see that on the show, but that's kind of like, for me, I was kind of childlike in that way. Like, 
having all this free time on my hands during the day at the mansion, it's like I could have that year round pass and I could go during the day with Ashley and do like all the things and kind of indulge in things that I didn't have the means to do when I was a kid. And even if you look at like my relationship with Hef, like as dark as some of it was, the way it appears on the show, I look like I'm a kid playing house, like kind of playing at the role of being like this pretend wife or this pretend mom that's not really married and doesn't have kids. And then with Kendra, like according to her and like everything she's talked about in the media and written in her book, she'd already lived a million lives by the time she was 20 moving into the mansion. You know what I mean? Like she'd been in rehab and been a stripper and worked at the pizza joint and supported her boyfriend and done all this stuff. But like dentist office. Yeah, dentist office. I forgot that one too. But like by the time she gets to the mansion, it's like okay to like take a breather and just totally like be into sports and have a messy room and sleep in if she wants to sleep in. And I'm not criticizing that decision at all because I remember when I moved in, even though I had a lot of goals and things that I wanted to do, I remember thinking after, you know, this handful of years I'd spent in college, like working hard to pay the bills and keeping my grades up to keep the scholarships and trying to audition and do all the things and take acting classes. The thought of having like a couple months to just catch my breath was so appealing to me. Like, oh my God, I'm going to have a couple months where I can, because when I moved into the mansion, I didn't think I would stay there as long as I did. I thought I'm going to have a couple months to like catch my breath, not have to worry about bills. I can get caught up. I can sleep in if I want to. I can worry about my health and like focus on all these things. So when I talk about Kendra doing all these things, I'm not criticizing that. I totally understand it. And I totally understand her headspace when she's saying I'm 20 I don't want any responsibilities and I don't know if she's in that interview volunteering I'm 20 years old I shouldn't have responsibilities or if they asked her to say that you never know in the confessional what we're being asked to say and what we're not but it's kind of weird to me that the show is putting it out there like you're 20 years old you don't have any responsibilities because most people do right all people do unless you're like a trust fund kid so that's kind of odd and it kind of plays into you know, Kendra being in the show's eyes, like the little sister character. So they always kind of push and like make her look even younger than she is. Right. And in this scene, it shows her walking around her room in a G string and a pimp cane and a tank top that says, F off. <laughs> <laughs> that pimp cane was funny. Was that like you could drink out of it or smoke yeah. out of it or something? Yeah, something like that. Um, oh, you in commentary, you ask her, what is that cane you're holding? And she says, during the legalized weed party, a guy came and gave her a blown out pimp cane. <laughs> so she says, OK, Kendra says that during the legalized weed party, a guy came and gave her a blown out pimp cane. You can fill it with alcohol and drink out of it. I say, I want to see that in action. Yeah, that's so <laughs> funny. I wonder if that was that same party where the mystical elf man came up to Hef and said, and your name is? And I've like flipped out. Betting it was. <laughs> I think it was too. And she says she still has her feet on the ground and her head focused, but her main goal is to get a grill. So she has to go to the the dentist's office to get a mold done. I thought Um, it was really funny how they cut Kendra walking in saying she used to be a dental assistant and... The guy said something like, oh, how about you come in next week? And they pause and they do a voiceover going, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was a really funny oh, edit. Shit. She was like, you know what that is, right? And he and they cut to the dentist doing the, oh, oh shit. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> they do the impressions. Have you had impressions done like that before? Yes, for my Invisalign. And they oh, yeah. make me kind of claustrophobic. Me too. That's what I was just going to say. Because they put so much gunk in them that when you bite down, it like fills up your whole mouth and yes. kind of goes back into your throat and you feel claustrophobic. And I start to gag and like yeah. freak out. Mm-hmm. I, I, I need to get Invisalign, but I'm like worried about that part of it. <laughs> yeah. Like so worried. So they do the impressions. They're mixing it up. And when they're mixing it up, like I can just feel what that feels like in yes, your mouth too. Yes, me too. too. It's, it's visceral. It's a very specific feeling. So, the, okay. And then they just are, they cut back to the mansion. And Kendra's like standing on the front porch with Sarah. But they're driving TV Johnny, the guy who makes the grills, up in the Hef 1 limo, which I thought was funny. Did they pick him up at the airport? They must have. Must have. And then they lower third him as a grill master. Right. And I wonder, is that what he called himself? Or did the show think that was funny? Because when I think grill master, I think like George Foreman grill. I think barbecue. Yeah, yeah. totally. Isn't it weird? how men identify so much with barbecuing and like when you give a man a grill he will just go out there and want a grill (laughs) what is this primitive urge (laughs) it's a thing it is a thing 
Nick loves smoking stuff. Yeah. Is Zach into smoking stuff yet? No. It's is like this a, a whole Is this a rite of passage that men get into? A yeah, smoking thing? Yeah, it's a whole other degree of barbecue. Whoa. And they all go out into the game house and he gives her the grill. They are like pink and silver. And am I crazy? But I feel like she wouldn't have preferred the pink. Like, I feel like he did that. Yeah, I feel like he thinks, oh, this is a girly girl. Girls next door are pink. Yeah, Yeah. but I don't think she would have picked pink. I feel like if she picked colors, it would have been blue and yellow. I feel like it definitely would have been blue, too. Yeah. And I say in commentary, I'm like giving her shit because I'm like, we weren't invited to this. Right, we weren't. Because we, like, if we would have not included Kendra in something, it would have been a drama. Right. But she did not want to include us in stuff. No, she did not want us included in this. In an interview, she says now that she has her girl, she definitely feels more gangster. She says she is a P-I-M-P. And you're right. She must have already been doing club appearances at this point because in commentary, she says she just partied with TV Johnny and Paul Wall in Houston. Yeah. And I'm like thinking, as I'm watching the commentary, I'm thinking, oh, it must be nice that you got to like pop around and go to Houston and party with rappers. (laughs) Yeah, because I remember she had done a a club appearance in Vegas. She'd done one in Houston. And I feel like there was a couple other ones too that she'd done. Interesting. It's nice to see Sarah Underwood again. We haven't seen her in a minute on the show. Yeah, it was brief. You blink and you miss it. Yeah, she's supposed to come on here. We're just waiting for her to be in L.A. Although I think it would be fun to take a trip up to her cabin world. I want to do that. We should totally do that. Okay, so the next scene starts out on the rolling hills. Hef is down in Mary's office and she's telling him about an offer that came in for a Captain Morgan ad. They want to put an ad in Playboy magazine and they want Holly and Bridget to be in it, but they can't use Kendra because you have to be 25 to promote alcohol. And I don't know if this is something that most people realize. Oh, I don't think most people know. People would assume probably that you need to be 21 to model in an alcohol ad. But really, and I don't know what the rules are now, but back in the 2000s, you had to be at least 25 to be in an alcohol ad because they didn't even want to use anybody that somebody might think is underage. Even for the alcohol spokesmodeling I was doing, you had to be 25. And actually to be on the cover of Playboy, you were supposed to be over 25. Because it had liquor ads in it? Yeah, or on the back page. I mean, they made exceptions for some people, obviously, but yeah, you weren't supposed to be under 25. Like when they were picking a playmate to do like a random cover, you know, like a college girl's cover or something. Oftentimes it wouldn't be the college girl because they needed somebody over 25. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And we should say how this ad even came about. The ad came about because people were protesting Girls Next Door being on E! because it was a Playboy show. So they were having a hard time getting advertisers. Like advertisers were dropping out. So one of the creative ways they would fund the show is by having a brand pay to be on the show. So Captain Morgan bought all this ad space, but instead of like ads that they were running during commercial breaks, it was they were featured on the show. Right. And then they also bought ad space in Playboy, which was where our Captain Morgan ad ended up. Because somebody on Instagram was asking me, oh, where do I see this Captain Morgan commercial? But it wasn't a commercial. It was a print ad. Right. So um, Hef comes down the stairs into the living room, and we're just hanging out in there like as, as if we do that. Well, I was going to ask you, were we already in there or were we called down to do a scene? Because it kind of has a feel of maybe we were in there doing something else. It does. And weren't you saying you were like stressed because you were like packing for Europe or something? Yeah, well, because they're going to add this Captain Morgan shoot on and there's like zero time left in our schedule. Like we have so much to do before we have to leave. And they're literally going to squeeze it in the day before we leave for our European trip. Mm -hmm. So... I was like totally stressing because we have obviously so much to do and so much packing and now we're going to squeeze like a full day photo shoot in on one of the last days we have left. Yeah. Because think about all the things that we probably had to go and do. Our nails and our hair and packing and our, I know that I had to drive um, Winnie and Gizmo to Mm -hmm. my parents' house, like just so much stuff. Yeah, and I know people are going to ask if we got paid for the Captain Morgan ad. Do you remember if we did or not? I don't remember. I don't remember. My guess would be we probably got paid something. It wouldn't have been a lot, like maybe like $1,000 or something like that. Yeah. That would be my guess. Yeah, I don't recall getting paid for it, but... Yeah, I don't know. And Kevin had a whole plan for how this was going to go down. Because like we said before, Kendra could not be in the ad because she was not 25 yet. 
And I remember Kevin telling me at the time that he thought that Kendra was going to throw a fit, that she was going to stomp her feet and be like haters. And he was going to think that was so funny, but she doesn't end up doing that. And I kind of got the vibe just watching her confessional and stuff that she knows that's what they want out of her and doesn't want to give it to them, which good for her because I didn't like giving them what they wanted either. I absolutely like, got that from Yeah, her like I think she could kind of get the vibe of what they wanted and didn't like being put in that position, which I would not have either. Yeah. Um, so Hef comes in and says, good news. They're going to do a Captain Morgan ad and you guys are going to be in it. And he didn't, I like how he doesn't ask us, do you guys want to be in it? He just tells us and you guys are going to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I was so excited to mm-hmm. do it and I w- wanted to be. And he probably knew he didn't have to ask, but I just, do, looking back on it now, I'm like, oh, we're doing this ad. Not, do you guys want to do it? <laughs> Do you think the scene where Hef is in Mary's office and Mary's telling him about the Captain Morgan ad and how Holly and Bridget are going to be in it, but Kendra's not because she's underage, does it seem creepy watching it back how Hef is so old and they're just so casually talking about one of his girlfriends being quote unquote underage? <laughs> I didn't pay attention. I mean, I, it didn't stand yeah, out Yeah, just me. like watching that now, like I didn't think anything of it at the time because obviously we're like neck deep in that situation, but watching it back, I'm like, ew. Yeah. Ugh. And then you describe, um, I mean, I think everybody knows what Captain Morgan is, right? Yeah, it's the rum with the pirate mascot. Yeah. And then you go, arr. Yeah. And I am trying so hard to be expressive in this scene. Like when Hef says we're going to be in it, I'm like, whoa. And I almost wonder, did we film this after they asked me about your car episode? Because I'm like cartoonish in this scene, like really trying to show how cool I think this is. That's funny. I mean, probably. Like it's over the top. And I say in interview, I'm so excited to do this Captain Morgan ad. I would love to be a Morganette. And they put my face in the graphic, Mm -hmm. which I love when they do that. I know. They're doing a lot more of that, which I love. It's fun. Yeah. They put my face in the Porsche too. Mm -hmm. Like they did it a couple of times in this whole uh, episode. And I say in commentary too, that I was super excited to shoot the Captain Morgan ad. But at this moment, I was like, they show me stressing and like freaking out. And I, but I say, what about Kendra? And, but they, and it make it look like I'm stressing that Kendra can't do it. But what I'm really stressing about is the timeline that we have mm-hmm. for this. <laughs> and they cut to my face and I look so concerned, like Kendra might not be in it. Yes. But we knew ahead of time all about the Captain Morgan ad. And like Kevin had already told me his whole manifesto about how he thought Kendra was going to stomp her feet and say haters. So like we already knew. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the next thing I have in my notes. Hef says Kendra can't because of her age. And I say, oh, but I actually already knew she mm-hmm. wouldn't be able to do it. But I think that I always thought that there might, they might try to pull some special circumstances for her. I mean, I know well, they, yeah, they, they usually did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked. And I think it's just a testament to how much they needed the ad money. I'm shocked that they even let us do something without her. I am too. And then in an interview, I say, well, I don't think it's fair. I was totally shocked. I was excited about the opportunity, but totally shocked. I think Kendra is going to feel left out, not doing the ad. They have me go into interview right here. And I say, I don't think this is fair. Like, I'm totally shocked. I was excited about the opportunity, but I'm totally shocked. I think Kendra is going to feel totally bummed about not doing the Captain Morgan ad. But this is a weird interview. It's all, I'm wearing the same shirt that I was wearing downstairs and the lighting is off. Weird. And it's almost like they pulled me upstairs to like get the inside scoop really quick. Almost like an on the fly. Like an on the fly confessional. Yeah. Weird. They're really trying to dig for dirt here. Oh, yeah. Because I think Kevin really wanted this scene and it just didn't happen. Yeah. Like the lighting's not like there's, there's something weird happening Mm -hmm. here for sure. I remember too in this moment, like I'm talking about all this because I'm really about like getting along. Let's not rock the boat. Like I just want everything to be okay. I don't want anybody left out of a photo shoot that's Mm going to like upset everything. Yeah. One thing I will add that in commentary, uh, Kendra even talks about how they were really exaggerating things. She's like, if I can't do it, I can't do it. I don't care. There's nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So the scene in the dining room is weird. First of all, I'm wearing something weird. And I'm almost wondering if they caught us randomly and were like, you guys need to get in the dining room so you can finish up this scene. Because I'm not dressed, not that everything I wear on the show is super cute, but usually I keep in mind that I'm going to be on camera. So I wear something 
that kind of matches or is kind of like a cute casual look or something. And I was just looking at this scene and I thought something seemed off about it. Like I'm not dressed for camera and you and I are just sitting in the dining room for no reason. Yeah, I felt like I looked really bad in this scene too. Like my hair is like We're in a weird camera ponytail. Ready. Like, yeah, it's, there's it's something off. weird about it. And Kendra comes walking in and she just kind of plops down. And it's weird and it's cut strangely. And I think they're trying to cut it to make it look like me and Kendra are like resentful of each other, but nobody is. You can tell it's like weird cuts. I think they're trying to to have Kendra walk in on us talking about the Captain Morgan shoot and make it like awkward. Yeah, and they try to cut it to make Kendra look pissed, but I don't think she is. Right. And then they and they show Kendra walking out and Hef giving her a peck on the cheek and they try to cut to make it look like I'm jealous, but like I don't give a shit. Like he gives everybody a peck on the cheek all the time. Yeah. It's just a weird, weird scene. Um, in commentary, I talked about how cool the Captain Morgan was and how we love the costumes and the themes and that we want to do another ad with them again and we did we did a second one do you remember that no we did it was a print ad and you and I they had outfits made for us from Trashy I still have mine it's like a black and white pirate oh, outfit oh wait yes do we, on the like stairs like a Marie Antoinette had, it's in the Great Hall, yeah. And we're standing, and I, we were standing on like a cardboard cutout, but in the ad, they make it look like a body outline. It's like, picture yourself here. Oh, like I do the, remember that It was one. like a sweepstakes to win a prize at the mansion. Yeah. In interview, you say it's really important to be professional and to work as a team and that you think you would have felt a little left out if it hadn't if you hadn't been in the Captain Morgan ad. Do you think it's interesting how they keep... So I think that they... St- put us down in these interviews to totally discuss Kendra not being a part of this. And I think it was totally on the fly, but tried to make it look like a confessional interview. And I think they were really, really digging here and they were really trying to make us, everybody, the audience, us, everybody feel bad that it, and how unfair it is that Kendra can't do this. Oh, 100%. Like, that's totally the plot line Kevin wanted, and it just didn't turn out that way. <laughs> and then Hef says, I'll see you guys at 3 o'clock to talk about that other stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what was the other stuff? Probably the scene we just talked about. We were on the couch. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're wearing that third rail horn hoodie. Oh, yeah, but it's like... Which is cute, but it's like layered over weird shit. Like I'm wearing something I typically wouldn't have wore on camera, I feel like. Yeah. And you're asking me about the Captain Morgan, what do I think the shooting is going to be like? Which is weird. Like why? They're just asking me to say that. Create conversation. I know, but that's why I'm just Because neither of us know. (laughs) Right. And I I say, I don't know. I'll find out what the first thing we're going to do is and then just go from there. Yeah. (laughs) The next scene is outside of my windows. They zoom into my room. Steven is doing my makeup in my room. We love Steven. We got to have him on here too. He's got a lot of fun stories. He actually hit me up because we had just posted about the Hef's birthday episode. And he said that was the first and last party Hef ever let me go to. I believe it because he has some good stories. Yeah. Did he let Laurent go to all the parties? I feel like Laurent came out to all of them. I think so too. So Steven's doing the makeup in my room. Um, they don't show up, but we were like talking about whether the captain was going to be hot or not. They kind of just kind of come cut into the scene. Yeah. And I think we need to remind people in 2006, this was the height of like the Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean thing. Yeah. So being like a sexy pirate or a hot pirate was very much on everybody's mind at the it time. It was a thing. They had a guy named Brandon who was the original Jack Sparrow at Disneyland, and they had to cut Jack Sparrow from the roster completely because adult women at Disneyland were getting so out of control. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. And they brought him back. Like they have Jack Sparrow there now. But for a while, it was such a thing that they had to like cut Jack Sparrow from the roster. They're like, no. Holy sh. Um, and I say, Holly and I were doing some research online and we were checking out the captain and everything on their website, he wasn't hot. He was like goofy. And he says, oh, that's funny. Well, good luck, girl. (laughs) I know. I like when he says that. That's funny. And then somebody knocks on the door and I yell, come in. And two men walk in and they are um, the creative directors. And they say we met before on a previous shoot. And I was trying to remember what shoot. I can't remember either. Um, We did shoot promo photos for E! before season one. 
And I don't know if he was that photographer. I'm kind of thinking it was something like that. Something like that. And I remember for the promo photos for season one, they wanted to dress us really mature. Do you remember that? Yeah. They had stylists with like these long billowing gowns. And this was back when like Desperate Housewives was a big show. And I remember going back and complaining to have him being like, I don't like these clothes. They're trying to make us look like Desperate Housewives. Because I felt like they were trying to dress us like mature trophy wives. Like these days you'd say like a real housewife. But I'm like, no, we're like girlish, we're young, we're immature. And we, <laughs> we want to dress that way. Yeah, and we it. ended up bringing down some of our own clothes and wearing like those super, super short dresses that we wore like on the front lawn and stuff like that. Yeah. So there was like mutiny on that stylist. There was. <laughs> um, and they say, yeah, so your first look today is going to be the angel devil and we want you to be the devil. I say, ooh, that's perfect casting. And little Winnie is Aww, there and so looks cute. up at me. And then I ask him, do we have a real pirate? Because a lot of the times, you guys, in these ads, they used a cartoon. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a, a real person in it or the cutout. There was yeah. just like a cutout thing. And they say, oh, yeah. And there's a reason their eyes get big and they say, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Because this guy would not break character. And we would work with him again in the future. He went to New Orleans with us. Yes. I never knew this guy's name. I never knew anything about him. I'd ask him his age. He'd be like, I was born in 1756. Right. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everything like he came here on his boat like or a ship yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it was docked like, up in the hut. Hudson. Like everything never, never, never broke character. And when we talk about modern stuff, he'd be like, what is this modern thing you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like he was like, it was crazy. Yeah. And I asked them, is he hot? And they look like they get all embarrassed. And they're like, I don't know. We haven't seen him yet. And we all laugh. And in commentary, I say, I was really hoping that the pirate was going to be Johnny Depp. <laughs> So next scene is out at the pool bar. Wardrobe is set up. There's a woman sewing things and tons of clothes out. And I say usually I'm at odds with stylists. And I didn't have a lot of experience working with stylists. But what I was referring to was that first Girls Next Door promo shoot. And some yeah. of you might be listening to this and be like, bitch, you dressed like a grandma when you were there. Why are you complaining about being dressed too mature? But I really didn't. Like, yeah, I wore like sweater sets and pearls. But it was always a very like cartoony, skimpy, bright color version of that. It was never like really something that somebody would wear to like, I don't know, lunch at Barney's or whatever the fuck. <laughs> and um, so you're standing there and the creative director tells the wardrobe person, those shoes are crazy. And they point to those red boots. Yeah. And I need to ask you because you say that the devil costume is something you would never, ever, ever wear. And I know why you wouldn't wear it. But I think you need to explain to people why you wouldn't. Because I think a lot of viewers would be like, wait, why? You wear lingerie all the time. Like it's Halloween. How is this not totally you? Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's extra skimpy. Yeah. For one. Like it's literally just a bra and a thong. Like a G string. And didn't like yeah. Crystal wear that outfit to Halloween? And even she was like, oh my God, this is too skimpy. Yeah, because it the way it was made, like it I don't know, like it was just very tiny. Yeah. And um also too big at the same time, if that makes any sense. So you're afraid it's gonna fall off. Yeah. If you if you see there's one scene where you can see in the back they have it all twisted and like um pinched off mm -hmm. in the back because it's way too big for me. Yeah. Um and they even have me having to wear if you look really closely, you can see I'm wearing like a nude tiny flesh colored like g-string underneath it oh. because it's so tiny and revealing that like everything would be hanging out yeah. if I wasn't wearing that um and it's all in that patent leather stuff which and that's is something not your style. I would never have thought to wear now don't get me wrong I think it looks really cute and I actually really like myself in it uh -huh. looking back at it and I in fact when I was watching this scene over the other day I showed Nick I was like hey look uh my the Captain Morgan ad Holly and I did and he was like god damn yeah. you look hot <laughs> like he loved it yeah but like at that time like I this was not my style at all yeah I can see that but also like the platform boots I feel like they're very like kiss me yeah, and the band. And I'm very girly yeah you're very and girly feminine. soft fabrics I felt like the patent leather and the big shoes it was very like 80s heavy metal stripper like you know what I mean but I liked it 
No, I think it looks amazing. But when you say that's something I'd never wear in a million years, I know why. But I just thought we needed to clarify the little details because I think other people would be like, think it was a thing you would wear. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Now I look back on it and I'm like, I'd wear that now. Where's that outfit? Yeah. <laughs> And then they show me in the angel outfit and there's this lady, one of the stylists, Sarah, she goes, I messed with the chiffon. And she does this funny finger movement. It's so funny. Yeah. I love when you come out of the bathhouse in it. They play this like heart music. And they like, put like a glow around me. I yeah. love that. And you say, I'm, I feel like I'm flying as you twirl around. And the, the stylist says, I, stylist says, I love it. And she claps. And um, <laughs> the seamstress says... I need she I had to go back and listen to what she says because I heard it all wrong and maybe you guys did too but she says she needs Amanda to sign off on it because she did something to the flow of the skirt but what I heard her say is I need a man to sign off on that because I did something to the flow of the skirt and I thought a man to sign off on it what patriarchy overdrive but when i went back and listened carefully it was amanda oh. to come and sign off on. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense um and in a commentary we talk about how amazing that seamstress was because she could literally whip anything up she was literally just sewing behind the pool bar yeah whipping shit up mm-hmm and then I walk out of the bathhouse as the devil and I say, I feel so naughty. And I think I look naughty. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're talking about losing tails and evolution. Are people still born with tails sometimes? Is that a thing or is that an urban legend? I thought that was something that some people still are born with, but I don't know. Hmm. But I have always thought it would be cool to have a tail. I know you're grossed out by it, <laughs> but that's what, I, obviously I have a tail as the devil and I'm talking mm-hmm. about it. When did we lose our tails? I kind of wish I still had mine. And you're like, ew. Well, if you could use it to like pick up stuff that would yeah. be. Yeah. No, I want like a prehensile tail where you can actually use it to balance and you to could, like, pick hang things off up things. and hang from it. And be a monkey. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or like cats, they can use it to like super balance and stuff. Yeah. Then the next scene is Kendra walking out to a get in her car because she's going to go and do the muscle and fitness photo shoot. But they are pl- trying very hard to make it look like this is the same day. Yeah, and it's not. She actually shot this during season one. I'm also shocked that they covered it but didn't use it in season one because I feel like they love a plot line of hers. But the reason I think they didn't is because the whole arc of season one was supposed to be us being on the cover of Playboy. And if they would have shown her shooting another cover like it was just a casual day at the park, that would have made the Playboy cover seem less special. Agreed. Yeah. But they're able to use it here. When it shows get Kendra getting into her car, it reminds me of how she and I used to talk about how we wish cars had toilets built into them. Yeah. Because I feel like back in the day, it's not so bad now, but back in the day in LA, if you were running errands all over town and driving in the car in the middle of rush hour traffic, there was nowhere to stop to go to the bathroom. And if you had to pee, you were just kind of... Oh, uh, it still happens today. Kendra says, I don't get to do the Captain Morgan ad, but I get to do the, be on the cover of Muscle Mag. But the way she says it is sort of snotty. So I feel like there is a little bit of like an annoyance to her that she doesn't get to do it. Do you think it's toward us or do you think it's toward the show because they keep trying to push this thing? I'm not sure. It could go either way. But she says it very kind of snotty, a little sing-songy, as if she gets something better than us out of it. Well, in a way, I think from the objective observer, she kind of does. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I like our thing better because I think it's fun to shoot together. And it's very much our type of thing. Like, we love themes and, like, goofy stuff and fairy tales and pirates and all that shit. Yeah. So like we prefer it, but I think from the objective viewer, would you rather be in like an alcohol ad that shows up in Playboy or would you rather be on the cover of a magazine by yourself? I mean, she's with a guy, but she's not with another girl that people are going to see on newsstands everywhere. Like that kind of seems like it would be the better prize. Right. And then this is a pet peeve of mine. I know what you're going to say. I think I know what you're going to say. I think I know what you're going to say. She screams. What kind of traffic is this? which we all complain about LA traffic. Uh But then she fake cries and says, I hate LA. I just hate it. This is a big (laughs) pet peeve of mine. Anybody who says I hate LA and I hate to be here, I have one word for you. 
bye because we don't want you here either like if you hate it that much and the, and the traffic is so awful to you bye. then make traffic a little easier by leaving yes please <laughs> like i'm so tired like we can complain about it but once you say i hate la because of it then leave <laughs> yeah, and don't get me wrong, like we all have our complaints about LA, but there's a lot to love about it uh-huh. too. And I just think back to when I was a kid, I used to dream of living in LA. Same. Like I wish, like sometimes if I'm having a bad day or if I'm down on myself or I feel like I haven't achieved as much as I want to achieve, I just remind myself when you were a kid, all you wanted to do was to be able to live in LA and go to Disneyland whenever you want. <laughs> so guess what? made it yeah (laughs) and this isn't just a Kendra thing anybody who complains about LA and says how much they hate LA I have the same thing for you then leave (laughs) I I knew we were going to be on the same page so it shows her rolling up to a studio Allison Reynolds is standing at the door waiting for her and she's clearly very 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 late because Allison says in a very sarcastic manner. And before she can even say it, Kendra goes, I know, I know, I know, God. And she's like, on time as usual. And we should point out too that Allison is the one who got her the job. Yeah, um, it's definitely going to come up here in a little bit. Allison 100% got this for her as a favor. Mm-hmm. And should we talk about, should we talk about here too, who she replaced and stuff and like how it all came about? If you want to, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm not going to say who it is, but there's something I want to say about the situation. Just it's something yeah. I thought of. So Allison was a photographer and a makeup artist and she was doing, I guess her connection was she was doing the makeup for this cover and she was working with that photographer and they were shooting this male bodybuilder who we'll see in the episode with a female model who was somebody from within the playboy world somebody who we knew yeah and um I'm just it's said in the I'm not gonna say who we're talking about obviously but um it's said I think either in commentary or in the show that Allison suggested Kendra for the job because they wanted to replace the model they had before because that model quote unquote had no personality and ever since like I've been diagnosed as being on the spectrum I look back on that person and obviously I'm not trying to like diagnose anybody but I wonder if she's on the spectrum too and never learned to mask oh because this person you know we would be around sometimes and it was just very hard to make any kind of connection or conversation with her and this is coming from me who's not a people person not a conversationalist somebody who's really really awkward even I was having a hard time thinking whoa what's going on here and it was kind of confusing and it's not like we ever like disliked her or had any drama with her or anything like that and she was never mean or anything but it came off as so standoffish that I sometimes it would seem a little frustrating and we'd wonder like what is up like does she hate all of us is she like just here for half and she like hates everybody yeah. But looking back, I wonder if she's on the spectrum and just like never learned to mask. There's two people in the Playboy world, women that I look back on and I think, oh, I think they have the same thing. Really? Now that I know. Yeah. And it definitely wasn't anything that was on our radar at that time. No, I no, I would have never thought of it. I didn't think of it as applying to myself. I didn't know much about being on the spectrum. Yeah. At all. Like it never. But it's just so interesting knowing what I know now, like. Kendra says Allison hooked her up big time with this Muscle Magazine thing. And she says Muscle Magazine doesn't have any age requirements for the magazine in the same like kind of little sing-songy, snarky Mm -hmm. way. So I don't know if this is the show trying to make her be that way towards it or if she does have that feeling. Yeah. And can we talk about, did the scene with the photographer come off like weird and pervy to you? Oh my God. So Allison's doing her makeup and the photographer comes over and they have this interaction where he's just like slobbering over Kendra in a way that I found really inappropriate. Same. Because Kendra does look stunning in this shoot, but there's a million ways to tell a model, oh, you look great. Oh, you're perfect for this. And the way he's going about it is unsettling to me, especially because we've just watch this whole episode where they're trying to tell us a million times to Sunday that Kendra is quote unquote underage and then Allison's like show him your top which I don't know if that means show him your boobs or get approval for the bikini top like I don't but the whole thing came off pervy and gross to me I thought so too because he's like staring her down he's like well you look gorgeous mmm he gives her a kiss yeah it's very odd 
he's still staring her down. He's like, you just, you look amazing. And it's just like a very creepy scene. It's not professional. He says, wow, okay, I love it. What's not to love? It's just cute. It just is just cringy. Yeah. And then they show the male model and he's wearing a thong and he kind of like squats and like readjusts his thong and they put a fart noise I over know. it, which infuriates me. me like I hate, too. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I hate the bodily function noises. And I think it's that they do that to him because he's doing the show a favor by agreeing to be on it. Like, I can guarantee you this guy didn't get paid anything to be on the show. No. And I know in Kevin's mind, Kevin thinks he's doing him a favor. Like, oh, who's ever heard of Dan Decker before? The girl's next door. Like, I know that's how Kevin's thinking of it. Yeah. But in my mind, anybody who agrees to come on the show for free is kind of doing us a favor. Yeah. Maybe not a big one, but they're they're being a good sport and they're participating. And I just think it's fuck that they make fun of him the whole time and then add a farting noise. It's so gross. 100 percent agree I was thinking I have all of that in my notes too Ew. and then and Kendra says in commentary that the guy she's friends with him on MySpace and he said that embarrassed that she embarrassed him yeah I don't know if it was Kendra that was doing the embarrassing but I'd be embarrassed too if I were him I'd be like Ugh. yeah I'm well, not her adding that to my resume her response was man up oh it's because what she's saying in the interview probably is what he meant like when she's like a guy in a thong is wrong it rhymes for a reason <laughs> Oh, maybe. <laughs> I thought that was a funny line, though. And the photographer says, well, you're just going to come in and be hot and sexy. And he said, well, we'll probably just have you barefoot since he is. And she said, but my butt doesn't look that good if I'm barefoot. And he said, well, it's not going to matter when you're on your knees. Ew. Right. Ugh. And Kendra gasps, and they do like the record screech. <laughs> and then the male model looks kind of concerned too. Like, what? Yeah. This is not what anybody signed up yeah. for. And then in commentary that you were talking about how pretty she looks in that shoot. But that when the magazine cover actually came out, they like it over airbrushed her. They really did. It's a phenomenon sometimes. Like, do you ever get your photo taken and the photographer gives you the pictures and you're like, fuck, I didn't need that much retouching, did I? And it's kind of insulting. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I'm a fan of a little retouching but I felt like they did that to us on our first Guitar World cover too like retouch the faces so much that we don't even look human and I only said this in commentary because Kendra had already said she wasn't fond of the cover yeah Kendra says she doesn't like the way she looks in it and uh, the next scene back at the front of the mansion and it's the Captain Morgan shoot and I say when Captain Morgan first showed up I was like oh my god and they show the gate slowly creaking open mm -hmm. and you hear somebody scream I have a Arrived. That is so funny. Yeah, he was hilarious. <laughs> he walks in and says, hello, lovelies. I'm saying in commentary that we did other setups for this shoot right. besides the angel and devil. And I have no memory of them. I say in commentary that we did a good witch, bad witch costume in the doorway. Which I have no I, memory of that. I don't remember what those costumes could have even looked like. Me neither. And then I say we did a masquerade set up on the stairs, which the only reason I have any memory of that is I still have the outfit from Me it. Me too. It was like a trashy lingerie, black and gold corset with like a big long gold bow down the butt that like draped down to the floor. Yeah, mine was one of the trashy lingerie pirate costumes. Yeah, and I remember you having that. It was like the one Kendra wore for Halloween, but it was like orange, right? Yeah, Instead like orange and turquoise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the good witch, bad witch, I don't even remember what the outfits were. No. I'm and then confused. what was the other one? Those were the three. There was the angel, oh, devil, I thought there was good four. witch, bad witch. I mean, maybe there was. I just don't remember. I just I just think it's funny because, I mean, we already talked about how he won't break character. and But it's hard to like work with somebody or get to know somebody or have a rapport with somebody when they won't break character like that. And like, I love a good theme uh -huh. and I'm all about like a char good character and everything. But I was like, damn, this guy is like for real. Yeah. And Have then you're like, should I play along or what am I doing? Is he with me <laughs> I know that you really start to question yourself yeah. it's hard and um he said what are these crazy uniforms you have on and I say I need a pitchfork and he yells that's obscene it's so funny <laughs> and you say holy shit, this guy is hardcore crazy and he was yeah and you and in commentary you say I hope that guy got paid a ton of money <laughs> Yeah, he deserves it. He was really devoted. I don't know if you guys noticed from that scene, but that was a real deal pitchfork, like metal, heavy. Like it wasn't just some plastic prop. This is a real thing. Do they make real pitchforks? 
Like, what's a pitchfork for besides devil's hay? Let you yeah. <laughs> picking up hay. Yeah, like, sc- like yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. So, do you think they went to a farm supply and just like spray painted it red? Yes. Holy shit. Because it was heavy and metal and crazy. That's yes. on another level. I know. And you say that the devil angel photo shoot was really fun because um, we got to be in character. I was evil and you were good. And she said we didn't even have to act. <laughs> I felt like those were good characters for us, though, because the devil is so Halloween-y, and yeah. I always wanted everything white. Like, that was kind of my thing for a while. And we say that um, the one that we did with the good witch, bad witch, I got to bring Gizmo into it. Why are we both forgetting that? Because usually my memory's pretty good. Like, I'm weirded out that I don't remember that. The only reason I'm thinking is maybe we forgot is because we were just so jam-packed busy that sometimes, like, my mind might have been on, okay, do I have all my outfits packed for the Europe trip what am I wearing each place well and the devil angel might have been like the main setup Mm -hmm. and maybe the other ones were like just in case kind of thing and we didn't spend as much time maybe Uh but the fact that gizmo was in it and I still don't remember doing it I'm surprised Elaine wasn't around snapping BTS photos yeah that too weird oh and you say in commentary I'm not gonna say names but do you guys remember the party with a guy in the spandex suit and his package hanging out. Oh, well, I've said names since then. It's George Barris. Yeah. I think I've talked about that like so many different times and places. In interview, Kendra says, I think the Captain Morgan ad is really cool and everything, but showing off your body and muscles and just knowing how hard you work to get to the cover of Muscle Magazine <laughs> is the sh- And I'm like, wasn't the cover just handed to her though? Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, if she's trying to say she worked hard on her body, okay, but... And then they show a copy of the cover. And then the next scene is back at the mansion in the backyard. Zooms into the dining room. Um, Holly says, I have a special present for you guys for your premiere, for our premiere. Can I just cut in and say, I hope these gifts weren't disappointing. Because when I hand you guys the jewelry boxes, Kendra looks so excited. Like she thinks she's going to get some diamonds. Oh. And I'm like, I hope they weren't disappointing. But you guys did a really good job acting surprised and happy. No, I remember (laughs) genuinely liking them. But that's funny that you say that because I slide the box over and I go, I like the box as if I know something about that box well usually I feel like when we would get those type of boxes it meant the nicer playboy jewelry like maybe not necessarily like a diamond necklace but like the 14 karat gold ones or right like the ones that weren't straight up costume right and that and so that was my only thing that I was thinking when you said that that maybe we thought it at the time because of the box it was in and Kendra looks really excited when she's about to open it and I'm watching this back thinking oh I hope they weren't disappointed. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody was disappointed, though. Or I'll speak for myself. I know I wasn't <laughs> disappointed. So what I gave you guys, for those who don't know, are the champagne bottle gold necklaces. And that was to celebrate our appearance in Scary Movie 4. And I say that we're having like an at-home premiere of Scary Movie 4, which I think just meant we were screening the movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, basically. So Sunday night movie. And then... In commentary, you go, what is that on the table, the dining room table? Is that a jar of peanut butter? But it was caramel sauce. Yeah. Because I was making, I was trying to make myself homemade caramel macchiatos, like Starbucks style. That's so interesting because I just perfected a keto version of the pumpkin spice latte. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Just at my own at-home barista. And I say in interview, tonight's a very special movie night because everyone's coming over to watch Holly Kendra and I in Scary Movie 4. And in commentary, I'm talking about my ponytail I was wearing and saying how I wanted to do a dinner and a movie night at the mansion that was 50s themed and have like all like diner food and stuff. And I'm so shocked we didn't do more of that. Although I do know we did eventually do the Italian night we always wanted to do because I found pictures of it in my scrapbook. He showed the Godfather and we did like the whole red check tablecloth. I'll put a picture of it on the Patreon with like candles and Italian food and stuff like that. That's good. But I'm really shocked we didn't do more of that. I think it was just because by the time we got confidence to kind of put those ideas out there, we were already doing the show and we were so busy. Yeah. And it would have been hard to find nights to do that on because there was, you know, buffet dinner and a movie three nights a week. Oh, I was thinking more like if it was 50s night, just find a night when Hef's showing like East of Eden or something 50s and then make the whole buffet like diner food and ice cream sundaes and stuff like that. Yeah. 
I do like how Kendra and I do the countdown and open the boxes at the same time. It's really cute. And you guys are both really good and gracious at accepting gifts. Because I feel like accepting gifts is kind of like its own talent. Oh. Like some people are good at it and some people act underwhelmed. That is true. But I never thought about this before. But that is totally true. I only thought of it because my mom always pointed out how my grandma was always really good at accepting gifts and making a fuss over like whatever anybody gave her, even if it was something dumb. (laughs) That's cute. Yeah. So in the movie night, you can see the guy walking into the living room carrying the film cans. Yes. Because when we would screen these new movies, they were still on film reels. Right. And that was a blast from a past scene, that guy Mm -hmm. too, because I totally forgot all about that guy. Yeah, he would come every Sunday night with the new movie and you'd have to carry them in these huge like metal cans. Oh, that 50s ponytail you were talking uh-huh. about too? You said that you bought that for our Halloween costume photo shoot too. Yeah, because there was a poodle skirt outfit. And then when it shows us watching the movie, they cut to my face, but it's from a completely different movie night. Like I think your birthday the year before. Like I'm in a whole different outfit, whole different hair. It's weird. Really? I didn't notice yeah. that. Yeah. And then they wrap the show up with us saying our kind of season ender exit lines again, even though this isn't a season ender. It's a, it's like the last episode where we're gearing up. We're trying to let everybody know how exciting things are getting. Yeah. And we're talking about all these new opportunities. And then they cut to Kendra saying she really wants to be in a music video. And I was wondering, did that lead to anything? Because it seems like if they would leave that in there, it would build up to, well, maybe she is going to be in a music video this season. But I don't know if she ever was on the show I don't know if she ever was on the show either we talk about how we really liked the lingerie the movie picked out for us like had us wear and they didn't let us keep it yeah it's strange they were cute sets from trashy lingerie and I always like to keep everything I wear for anything just as like a souvenir yeah I'm surprised they didn't let us keep that because I still have my bra from Captain Morgan I don't have that outfit because I let Crystal borrow it (laughs) (laughs) Nick is like I know, right? Because <laughs> I would have still had it for sure. Yeah. And then in commentary, though, we ask, do they have to bleep out swear words on the DVD? And Kevin must have said no because you go, okay, cool. <laughs> the fact that we're doing the season two commentary and we don't even know if the swear words are being bleeped out, which doesn't make sense because you'd think season one DVD would have been out and about by the time we're doing this commentary. Oh yeah, the DVDs aren't out yet. Oh, whoa. We're just in the dark for a minute. But back then, like the cycle was slower. Like now everything goes straight to streaming like almost right away. But back then, like things would be on TV and then the DVD would come out like a year later or something. It would take a while. And we actually got our names in the credits. Yeah, we had to fight for that, though. It, no, but I mean on the movie, not on the oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The show, we still don't have credits. They are mm-hmm. not crediting our full names in this show yet. But on the movie, we have credits. Yeah, the, the movie screen. gives us credits. And in the commentary, we're talking about how we should have credits on Girls Next Door because we don't get, like it says, special thanks Hugh Hefner at the end, but like we don't get anything at the end. And even in the beginning, it's just our first names. It's not our last names because we're just bobbleheads. We're just cartoon characters characters it's more infantilization and eventually we got credits and that's because I went and complained to Mary I'm like they don't give us credits at the end she goes that's ridiculous she picked up the phone called somebody like Mary could get done she picked up the phone first person she called she goes yes we need the girls names at the end credits and it needs to be their first and last names they're not bobbleheads yeah (laughs) thank god Mary she was the one who got us paid she was the one who got us credits like seriously and the inner the wrap-ups and interview holly says i really loved all the opportunities that have come our way and all the things we are doing and i say we love doing everything as a group and there's so much going on and i'm really excited for the future and kendra said it'd be so cool to be in a music video together i mean i go to sleep dreaming about being in a music video dreams come true around here i think she was in the mode of just putting things out there too yeah i think we were all starting to get the idea that this show was now a gateway for us Yeah. And an excuse to do other things. And then Kendra says in commentary, they make it look like I'm dying to be in a music video or something. But wasn't she? She (laughs) says she was. (laughs) So funny. Like she literally just said she was. This episode really made me think about like infantilization because there's so much of the underage of it all and the I'm 20, I don't need any responsibilities and things like that and just what we were allowed to do and what we weren't allowed to do. And have you ever heard the debate that like, 
people don't like it when people use the word girl to describe grown women. Yes. And I, I always think about it when I, because I use it all the time. Me too. And I've been dragged for it hard. I've seen you dragged for it. And I'm like, oh shit, uh, my turn's coming because I only use it. In fact, I'm the opposite. Like mm-hmm. I don't like to be called a woman really. Well, you know what I feel about the word woman and it has nothing to do with like the meaning behind the word or anything. It's just, it's a clunky kind of ugly sounding word, Uh woman. And it's not a fun word. Like people like to come up with fun things, which people debate about this too on TikTok, like girl dinner and girl math and stuff like that. Yeah. But saying like woman dinner and woman math, it's clunky because it's a two syllable word. It's got a clunky, ugly W at the beginning. It's just easier to say something man or something girl or sometimes I use the word boy to describe grown men. And it's not that I think this conversation shouldn't be had because I think words are powerful. I think there are situations you would never want to use the word girl to describe a woman. Like I had somebody write a whole like mean fucking op-ed about my book when it first came out and it was a woman basically accusing me of being anti- feminist because I use the word girl so many well, times. Well, watch out in my book because it's used 8 million times. It's fucking coming. <laughs> and <laughs> when I was a, a criticized for it, I was like, I don't think I would change that because here I'm talking about a situation where, like, think about the Mean Girls era. I don't think any of us were behaving in a very womanly manner. It was so much fucking high school drama shit. Plus, we were called the girlfriends. Our show is called The Girls Next Door. Yeah. Well, and we all refer to each other as girls. Are the girls down yet? Are the girls over yeah. here yet? Where are all the girls? Are yeah. They, you know, like everybody was a girl there. Mm-hmm. It was never. It was never referred to as women. And... We weren't treated like women, I don't think. Does this parallel make sense to you? Like when I didn't want to be dressed up as a frumpy 40-something, yes, I'm in my 40s now, but back then I didn't want to be dressed up as like a 40-year-old trophy wife. I still wanted to dress youthful. Is that what you mean when you say, is that a parallel? Kind of. Yeah, it's like I still, I want to be a girl. A girl is youthful and fun and celebratory and woman just seems like so clinical and I don't know not fun older over it like Mm -hmm. when I say we weren't treated like women at the mansion I mean that I feel like we were treated like children in some ways no and that I totally agree with Mm -hmm. like we weren't allowed to have autonomy and everything we did we still had a curfew we were very much treated like we were somebody's 12 year old cousin yeah we were expected to perform like women in the bedroom but everything else we were not treated like women I feel like yeah but I still like the word girl I do too so if you don't like it bye (laughs) that's two byes in this episode you don't like the LA traffic bye yeah well no nobody likes the la traffic if you don't like la bye yeah if you don't like the word girl bye bye. (laughs) and don't get me wrong again i'm gonna say i do think there are situations where i wouldn't use the word girl where i just think it's like inappropriate or not serious enough or you know i'm making more of a point by saying woman but i don't think there's anything wrong with casually referring to appear as a girl right i agree or myself as a girl. Right. I feel like a girl. So um, we're going to leave on that note. Girl if you power. guys, Girl power. Girl power. <laughs> so if you guys would like more content, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we will be back next week with an exciting episode. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.